it has been a year since I have created this YouTube channel. And I'm gonna share with you several things that I've learned along this YouTube creative journey. think you would like to start a YouTube channel, I hope that this video is helpful for you. I'm going to share with you those things that I have learned and there is no real order. Strap in. If you're a crocheter, go ahead and crochet. If you'd like to pull out some paper and pen to take notes or you want to take notes on your phone, now is the time to do that. So the first thing I like to talk about is to be authentically yourself. Just be you. People tend to gravitate to those that are approachable and like them. Just share the things that are going on in their life. Those are the videos that I have found that are the most successful on my channel. And it also makes it easier to record things if you can genuinely be yourself and you don't have to pretend like you're somebody else. My experience, I used to sell makeup. I wasn't necessarily successful at it. But I did learn to not take myself so seriously as I was putting on makeup and I would take pictures and I would do little videos and things like that, instructional videos. And I learned it, it takes time to get comfortable in front of the camera and to look where the camera is. I actually started this video with my eyes over there where the camera is not and I need to focus my eyes where the camera is. So if you are recording for the first time and you want to be genuinely yourself, pretend like you're talking to someone that you are, you know, you want to share something with. So that is helpful to talk to the camera. Be authentically yourself. To maybe in the beginning of your videos, share your why of why you started this video because a lot of people don't start with your beginning video when they start watching your channel. They may start in the end of the line and you may feel like you're being repetitive, but you're not actually being repetitive. You're being informative because they may not know why you started the channel. So state your, state your purpose, state your why. And that's kind of important if you're starting a channel that has a certain niche. Now it's important to have a niche because it becomes more difficult to record something if you aren't really excited about what you're recording. You may think, oh, I wanna record about this because this is gonna be more successful and you're gonna hit burnout. Make sure that when you're recording something, you're actually excited about your content because when you go to go record again, it's much easier if you actually have an interest in what you're recording. And what's fun is that if you have a theme, so like on my videos, I will share what I crocheted in a month. I tend to use those often because I don't crochet the same thing every month. And people like to see new things that I'm working on, what's going on with me, those types of things. You can reuse ideas for different videos. The other thing I really want to talk about is getting monetized. It's really hard. Now, I started this channel as a way to teach my friends how to crochet. And then I changed it a little bit because you know what? I want to I want to help my friends to continue to want to crochet. So, my intro is usually I am here to inspire others to crochet. So if you go back and watch my older videos, I explain my why a few times, but now I've changed it to inspire others to crochet. That being said, when I started the channel, my initial purpose wasn't to get monetized. It was just to help others learn how to crochet. And then as time went on, I thought, well, why don't I get monetized at the same time? YouTube, they have a certain standard that you have to meet and that is 4,000 watch hours with 1,000 subscribers. When you're starting out and all of your followers are pretty much your family and your friends, I don't know if anybody has 1,000 family and friends that would actually follow their YouTube channel. I know I didn't, so it takes a lot of work. And watch hours are kind of weird. Watch hours are basically the amount of time that people watch your videos basically translates if you want if you have a channel that you follow and they're a small channel the more that you watch their videos the more successful that they'll be if you're watching a video you don't watch it all the way to end there's there's some time that you could actually help them have more watch hours by watching the entire video i didn't know this before now that when i watch others videos i tend to watch to the end liking is amazing and watching the whole video is super helpful. That will help other channels to grow. But what's cool about watching the entire video that it will help the AI know that one, the person that created the video is creating content that people wanna watch. And so that it will send it out to other people that are watching similar items and it will pop it up on their feed 
for videos to watch. I know it's AI, it's out there and things are constantly changing. So if you want to help a channel to grow, watch their videos all the way through and like and actually share. These all these things help channels to grow. I want to just give a shout out to those that have helped my channel to grow. Not just my mom, but everyone that has taken the time to watch my reels and my videos. I couldn't have gotten where I am without you and you watching what I'm creating. So thank you so much. With the monetization, I got approved in April and then I didn't really start earning more money till June. And when I did, it really wasn't that much. Just so you know, I didn't know how YouTube worked. Getting subscribers is also a lot of hard, consistent work. I decided for myself that I was going to load a video every Friday at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I posted every week at the same time. And for me, that sets in my mind, okay, I need to have a video out, but it also lets others know, okay, that's when she's gonna release it. I also let my shorts come out. I just added another one to my schedule, so I will release three a week, usually on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. In my back studio, I can track the activity of each of my videos, and it also has this AI in the back that tells me what days will be the best to post my videos. For me, I have the most viewers on Friday at that time and I have a lot of viewers on Saturday. That's why I post when I post. But what's interesting about my shorts, they're actually my reels from Instagram. Right now my focus is creating good content, having good thumbnails, which I'll talk about in a little bit, having good lighting, which I'll talk about in a little bit, good sound, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but all those things add up to where we are now. If you are making reels on Instagram, you can reuse them, recycle them. Why reinvent the wheel? Just use them. I talked about showing up consistently and I decided to do one video a week. Now consistently for someone else, maybe two times a week. I felt like one time a week was something that was doable for me and that I wouldn't get burned out. You know, I have other things in my life. YouTube is not my 100% all the time because I gotta crochet sometime, right? This person that I was following, she just announced that she's not gonna be running her YouTube channel anymore. She reached burnout because she was doing so many things across social media. She was posting twice on YouTube. I can see where that would cause someone to be burned out and she was doing all the work herself. You are doing all of your own content which that's what I do, is I suggest start small. It's okay, you can build up. Consistency breeds momentum. I do have kind of a tentative schedule of when I film and when I edit and when I do my thumbnails. Well, I have an idea of what my content will be and then, then I will film my video. I find that when I'm in the mood to film my video, that's when I film it. And then I will edit the video over two days. Sometimes my videos are really long. You know, five minutes takes me an hour because it does. It's important to give yourself enough time to edit. So I will film maybe Friday and then I'll edit Monday, Tuesday. And on that Tuesday, that's when I work on my thumbnails and my write-up for the description of the video. And also, another thing that I want to talk about is use graphics to help to bring interest to your videos. There are different free apps. I tend to use Canva. I can create whatever I want in there and it's unique to me. If I'm creating graphics, I use different apps. Like I talked about Canva, my intro and my exit, that's what I used Canva for. And then if I have like little graphics that I want to put in the screen, as the video is going, I find that CapCut works really well for me. You can use it on your phone and you can also use it on your computer. There is a learning curve and I'm still not 100% familiar with it, but they have sound effects. Canva also has sound effects. There is a free version of Canva. I subscribe and use the paid version as use Canva for multiple things. So I decided, you know what, it's easier if I use the paid version to be able to do all the things that I need to do. I'd like to make this as budget friendly as possible and you can get away with filming on your, your iPhone, which that's what I do. They have really good cameras. There's no need to go out and spend a huge amount of money on something that you're not gonna use right away. I edit my videos, I use iMovie. Familiar with it? It's already within 
what I'm using. I use that on my laptop, not on my phone. I would find that very irritating because it's so small. For an Apple user, I would suggest iMovie. If you're Android, I know that people use Adobe. Thumbnails, silly thumbnails with silly faces. The AI on YouTube really likes that. If you look, I'm very animated because guess what? The AI likes that and it will push it out to people. You know what, why take yourself seriously anyway? I guess if you had a serious channel, you need to be serious. I have learned to just accept it and move on and it is working for me. Another thing that I've learned is when creating, be open and flexible because if you're going by algorithm, they're always changing. You need to adapt. If you're running out of ideas, something else I learned, ask your community in your community tab, ask them in the video. Hey, this is what my channel is about. What would you like to see? And that is an amazing resource to ask people. You can create community posts. It's kind of like a little bit like Facebook. Create a post and your subscribers will see that and they can interact with you. I usually schedule mine the day before my video is released so that people can know what to look for in my video the next day. That community tab I use, I didn't initially know that it was even there or something that I could use. The creator studio dashboard is a wealth of knowledge and everything in there is free it's it's awesome it's like the back back door of your youtube channel and you can see analytics there are also videos what's new with youtube um, there's also if you go through there it'll tell you like suggested videos to help to film about what what is happening in your niche popular videos Maybe you should make something about this certain topic. So something I just learned today that I wanted to share with you, mentions, and I'd never heard that before. So I went into the section in my dashboard that has the comments. So when people comment on my YouTube video, it all goes in one spot. It shows me who's commented and if I've responded back. And they will sit there until I respond back. The next tab over, so let's, let's pause, put a pin in that, but it's really important for me I feel like to thank those that have watched my videos and have commented on my videos because I really, it feels good to be appreciated. I also want them to know that I saw their comment and I appreciate their comment. So in that section where it says, you know, the comments, you go one over and it says mentions. And I went in there and I had five different mentions. There was someone that, that shared on, she did a, a shout out for me on her YouTube channel. I don't know who this person is. And then there were a couple other people then mentioned that I had a really fun pattern and they mentioned that and there was a whole, you know, they were commenting. So that made me feel really good. So I'm like, oh, I need to check there more op often. Very, very cool. If you are sharing another YouTube channel and you do an at sign, that's where it's gonna show up in their mentions section. Something else I learned is B-roll is awesome. When you're trying to create a video, they say that the eight minute mark is the sweet spot. So if you can make a video that's eight minutes, like the percentage of watch time will help your channel to grow and help help build that monetization thing so eight minutes if i'm out somewhere and i because my niche is crochet i will like if i'm going to the store and i'm grabbing crochet i will film it this is on all because that's what youtube wants and then I'll, i also film it vertical because if i'm making a reel that's really good content to have too so that's what i film the very beginning of my youtube channel my husband was very much like we went on a trip and I was just, he was like, hey, film this, hey, film that. And he'll send me really good B-roll as well that I can add to my content. And so there's a video in, and I'll link it below. It's it's a good, it's a vlog. It's one of my first ones. I, I video all these different things. I remember there was a fire, there was a snake, there was, there's all these random things in the video. It's fun to have B-roll, again, adding interest. So B-roll is amazing. You to need have. to make sure of that I learned. You want to make sure you don't have copyrighted music because if you have copywritten music, you'll get a strike on your account. So copywritten music, it when you load your video, it goes through to see if you have any copywritten material in your video. There's an AI computer thing that runs through there. And if there's something that isn't quite right, it'll notify you, hey, you need to correct this or not monetize this video. If you're beginning and you don't, your channel hasn't been monetized yet, it will still notify you, hey, there's copyright infringement on there. You may want to change the music, okay? Don't use copywritten music. 
Um, sometimes it'll be blocked in certain countries and it'll only show in some and it won't be a strike on your account. You load and you're not sure, they'll let you know. And if you wanted to still use that video but have a different music, go ahead and use that different music. There is free music. You can have music that is just free. So like background music if, for again, for me, if I'm crocheting or something and I don't want just white noise, I'll add a little bit of music and that music is like copyright free or whatever, but I still acknowledge the music that is in my video. That's also music that you can use off of YouTube if you so choose. And they have a huge library back there. And again, that's in that dashboard part. There's like a section in there for music. There's so, there's so much to learn. I'm still not a hundred percent proficient at everything. Another thing I learned, don't delete the messed up scenes. So if you're talking, and you totally screw up what you're saying, keep it. People wanna see real people. Decided fairly early on to add a blooper reel, and I add that blooper reel at the end of my videos. Maybe you don't wanna keep that, but for me, because I'm not so serious, it's okay to keep those. Something that I feel like I wanted to add to my channel is an intro and an exit to my videos. With the exit, it makes it so you want your viewers to subscribe or see more of your videos, you can add an end scene. It makes it nice to have like at least five seconds so that it will run on that. And an intro kind of introduces you and shows what your channel brand is. I made mine in Canva. So that YouTube is for everyone. Again, don't compare where you are to somebody else's success. You've probably heard that before because they had to start from somewhere. It takes a lot of work, talk, takes a lot of patience, takes a lot of tenacity to keep going. Good light is important. As you can tell, you can see my face. In my first few videos, I didn't have light in my face and I was kind of in the shadows and it was like, ooh, it's spooky. A window, because my window's over there, my table's facing this other direction because how my room is arranged. Interesting background is back there. Honestly, personal choice, I don't want to see yarn, okay? I, I wouldn't be able to keep it 100% straight. I like to put mine in baskets. That's why I don't have yarn on my back wall. Some people have these amazing displays and it looks amazing, but I don't want to spend all my time rearranging my yarn because I want to be spending my time creating. And that goes along with my theme because hello, my name is Diana. Sound is important as well. I try and film when my air conditioning isn't running. It is actually running now and I'm trying that I have never tried before, but I have a microphone and I'm hoping that it will block the other sounds that are going on. I can go back and do that in iMovie because my air conditionings are sitting like right outside the window and they're huge and they just make a whole noise. And so I'm hoping that the microphone I'm using works really well for this video. This is the last thing that I'm going to touch on. It's important to have a niche, something that you can feel like you can focus on 100%. If you can't consistently be on that same niche, maybe you start another YouTube channel. As I have one, one thing that I feel really strongly about, and this may take some time for you to figure out which one, which niche, is important to you. Mine happens to be crochet. It makes recording much easier. And I try to imagine myself when I was first starting to crochet, what are the things that I wanted to learn? And maybe when I was beginning to crochet, I didn't know those were the things I wanted to learn or that's what it was called. That's how I create my YouTube videos. If you liked the content of my channel today, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. If you are a crocheter and you sat through all this, thank you so much. If you are not into crocheting, you should consider crocheting because it's amazing. And on that note, happy crocheting. The, the authentic, the, that's, that my brain can handle. Creator, studer, bleh. the, so, I can't even remember what it's called. An end horizontal, I had to think about that for a minute.